Hi everyone, welcome back to the show. My guest today is Three Douglas. He's a good friend of mine from crypto Twitter, and he's gonna show us how to create our own non-fungible tokens, also known as NFTs. As you know, NFTs are a growing part of Web 3.0. Recently, Lindsay Lohan sold her first NFT for $50,000, which she'll donate to charity. Non-fungible tokens are digital assets that represent a wide range of unique, tangible items from sports cards all the way to virtual states. He is going to show us how to create our own NFT, how to look it up, and how to send and receive. That's all next. Stay tuned. All right. Show is yours, sir. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, not a problem. Um, thank you for having me on. Um, I figured we'd start with um, Rarible. It's probably the easiest platform to do Ethereum NFTs, and you don't have to have an account. You just have to have an Ethereum address connected to a wallet, okay. like MetaMask or something like that. And as you can see, um, I've already got mine connected. As you see, I got a little face right here and stuff, so it shows that I'm here. And this is just like the basic homepage for uh, – that was my landing page. So this is the basic homepage. And so as you can see right at the top, and whether you're on a phone or a computer, um, it's exactly the same easy steps to build an NFT with Rarible. And a lot of the sites, um, a lot of platforms you're going to use for Ethereum will be basically the exact same steps, which is great. So um, there's no extra steps, really. This probably has the most amount of steps compared to the other ones. So you can see I clicked on Create, and it just says, okay, what do you want to do, a single NFT, or do you want to do a multiples? And so... I'm just going to click single. It doesn't matter if you click on multiple. It will allow you to mint multiple in a single transaction. Instead of having to say, you know, do one each every time. And then you can have um, something similar to like a mint number, even though there are no mint numbers with Ethereum. Um, that's probably the, the biggest difference between NFTs on Ethereum and other platf other chains is uh, Ethereum, you have no mint number. You just have ID number for that individual type of NFT. Um, and so as you can see, it's just like, choose your file and they offer a various number of files which is nice because it used to just be image files but now you can do image gif video uh, audio um you can do, you know like before we used to have to use base 64 media to store stuff inside nfts now we can just directly use the actual media itself so i'm just and, click on choose and this file. this file is the picture that you're going to use yeah, it's going to be the cover, is what we call it, the NFT cover, what you'll see as, um, when the NFT comes up. Um, so if, if you're wanting to sell your artwork as an NFT or you're wanting to sell, like I have albums, I actually would make like a cover for the album. And then inside the NFT, which I'll show you, you can actually lock up the media. Um, and so if you're wanting to share, like sell your art this way, it's really best to build like a preview you know, with mm -hmm. like something inside of the preview image for your cover, like um, sample or something like that. So that way people can't just download the um, the cover and get your, your media. Right. They can just steal what you're making. Right. Um, so I'm just going to, here's a picture. So I'm going to go and grab this image. As you can see right now, it popped up. It's a very basic image. It's not a GIF or anything. Nothing special. But you have 30 megabytes on uh, Rarible and other platforms. They'll use IPFS. So you can have even higher amounts of megabytes. So you can actually get some pretty high quality images inside of the cover. So if that's the only thing you want to put in there as a cover, you can get pretty good quality. And then you can see off to the side, there's a little preview of what it's going to kind of look like. So that way you... You know, you can figure it out. Now, I always recommend when minting, do not place on sell. Um, there, it's too often that there's uh, transaction errors where if you're trying to put it on sell, the the transaction error will result in not getting an NFT that at all. It will just have an empty blank void. But if you're not putting on sell and there's an error, you normally will, the NFT will work. Mm -hmm. um, and you see unlock once purchased. I just click that open. And that's where we can insert um, kind of whatever we want to hide inside the NFT. There's only a couple of platforms that allow this kind of quick, easy embedding, but almost all NFTs can embed. I'll show you how to do that the second way as we go down. So, for example, I'm going to say hello um, just because 
that's possible. Now, if you want to do markdown, uh, there is a markdown. As you can see, it says markdown supported right underneath it. Um, they do have some places you can go all over the internet to learn markdown because you can put markdown buttons and you can hide your links that way, which mm -hmm. is really useful. So people don't know where the data is hiding you know, online. They can just access it. And so that way it stops them from being able to share it. Now you see right next uh, to where it says it has this thing highlighted, it says rareable. Right next to it says create. Um, if you want to have a special collection where people can um, be able to search it on OpenSea or be able to see your daily average for that collection going up or down, um, you would normally want to create a collection and just clicking on it. It's going to ask basically the same information you would if you're building a token. Um, what's the image? What's the token name? What's the symbol? And then a dis short description. And then any URL you want people um, to be able to access it from. Um, I'm not going to do that because it has its own separate cost to mm -hmm. mint uh, a, a collection on its own. So you'd want to do a collection, and then you can actually mint into that collection over and over and over. So, so you can have... With question, so with wearable or with any of these NFTs, uh, what are you spending? Are you spending ETH or? Yeah, we are spending ETH uh, for the, the minting. Um, whatever blockchain you're on, they normally want you to use the native token. Right. Um, and then something like on um, most platforms and most blockchains, you can purchase the NFT using non-native tokens. So ERCs or like the rareable token you can actually use to purchase on rareable open c you can use wrapped eth and wrapped bitcoin and all sorts of fun stuff to purchase nfts but minting yeah they want the native token just so it will be like a, a native transaction on the blockchain and not an internal transaction on the blockchain gotcha um so like the name in this case we're just going to put um i'm 3d and you see it changes on the preview as i'm typing um and then description is this is me um as you can see we have not all blockchains have royalties now wax has a royalty system a uh, rebel has a world royalty system and i believe a super rare has a royalty system so depending on where you're mincing it will determine if you can get royalties if you don't have the ability to put in royalties you can build a smart contract to do that for you. So you could actually build a smart contract on Ethereum to watch your NFTs as they're being bought and sold. And you do, can do a lot of fun stuff with that in the back end. But thankfully with Rebel, we can do it right here. We don't have to worry. And as you see, they recommend 10%. Um, I actually have a couple NFTs that are 90% and 100% because they're donation NFTs. So reselling that actually redonates to the original creator so that's there's a lot of fun stuff you can do here putting up higher royalty um reduces the incentive to sell and doing a lower royalty uh increases the incentive to sell so depending on what you want done uh you can do it here because with you know ethan um nfts unless you build the entire nft yourself by scratch with code people can send it sell it burn it you know so this is the um, incentive program to help around that and you just type in the number like i'm going to change it to 30 percent just because it's a good number i like three and now under here under properties sometimes it people call this details some blockchains and some platforms will call it details instead of properties this is where you can hide additional information um you can put back end of links in here if you're trying to embed data in on a platform that doesn't allow you to um, embed data like we saw earlier. Um, and in this case, I'm going to, you know, you'd put your, your name would be like right here. So um, person and then what that represents would be on the next one, um, 3D. And then we can say um, uh, NFT. Yes. And so now we already have... Um, Two of them up there, and you see it kept popping up another spot below there, and another spot below there. Every time that I do that, it's going to do, keep doing that. Uh, it locked everything. Oh, it locked. Actually, da, da, da. Uh, I clicked the create item. I'm actually waiting on it to return to me the little transaction. Oh, okay, gotcha. So I can, because normally when you hit create item, it will send. 
a transaction to your uh, MetaMask, which uh, I'm going to pull it up because it's security. You can't see it on your screen, which kind of <laughs> kind of sucks. But yeah, I mean, it's a good reason it does that, right? Do you recommend MetaMask um, for when you're doing this for just ease? Yeah, I I do. Uh, MetaMask is probably the one of the most uh, incorporated uh, wallet systems or, or online wallet systems for just about all NFT platforms. I mean, almost all of them except MetaMask if they're on ETH. Mm -hmm. um, and there's like when you're on Wax, it's the Wax Cloud wallet that's the most common. And so every chain has their most common form of wallet that they use for minting. And it's best to just use that. And I use MetaMask just for minting NFTs. I don't use it for anything else. Um, and so uh, that's, you know, another thing you can always do is if you're using one wallet for your main wallet, use another wallet for minting. And that way, if something was the, because people can use the blockchain to see everything's going on. And even though they'll see you moving money from one wallet to your MetaMask wallet, they can't say for sure that is your wallet because, uh, your MetaMask is only being used for minting. Gotcha. And yeah, it's not pushing to my MetaMask. Once you're, once it does, it's pretty much ready to go. You can just start yeah. sending it around if you wanted to. Yeah, actually, the only thing that it's not doing is sending to my MetaMask, so I can hit accept on the MetaMask, and then after that. It goes into a transaction and it says, um, you know, it puts it, tries to put it into a block. So you have to pay your, your, you have to adjust your gas fee, pay your gas fee through MetaMask. And then it, it goes directly into a transaction and just waits to be blocked. And then once it's blocked, um, which we can't show you at the moment for some reason, um, and that's probably because um, Rarible and stuff, they've had a lot of gas, high gas fees. So mm. it's possible they could be saying, hey, look, because of gas fees, we don't want anyone minting right now. Right. Um, yeah. Which is the which is the difference between if you're doing an NFT strictly by the code because if you want if you know solidity, you can code out your NFT and then push it to the blockchain completely on your own. Really. Um, you don't need a platform. These platforms just make it easy. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, normally it would bring you back to your page, which I can show you just by clicking on that. It would normally bring you back here, and then when you scroll down, and you're under created it would be the very first block like actually we can see it is yeah there it goes it was trying to mint something and then it pushed it out because i didn't accept the transaction because i never received it yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah as you can see there it was actually trying to mint it it really was um well we can see those there i mean that's yeah i, I have tons of them and yeah uh, for example let's just bring this one up this one actually has unlockable data. So you can see um, it has all the info, it has tons of info and stuff. And when you're the owner of the NFT, um, it will allow you to unlock the NFT, which. What does unlocking uh, the NFT do? It will show you what was put inside of it. Ah, um, okay. That's actually what I'm hoping to show. Oh, I got to go to one of mine. Um, Try that again. As you can see on Aetherum, they do this multicolor for the name if there's mm -hmm. something locked inside of it. Um, so all of these are people are ones other people have have made, or these are ones you've made. Uh, I was on a page where I wasn't actually seeing the ones I uh, I was seeing all the ones I made, but sometimes someone else might own it, and you can actually oh, okay. view. You can actually view your NFT inside their wallet. And so I, that's why it wasn't letting me unlock it. It was like, hey, um, you're looking not at yours. You're looking at one that someone else actually owns of yours. Gotcha. I know it's a little strange, but like you can see here, someone else minted uh, this one. I own it, so I can I can see it and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and so just going, there it is. That so let me ask you about that, because the... All right, so you've created it, and it's on the page, and say you wanted to send it to me. Mm -hmm. uh, what would I need to have on my side to make it possible to receive the NFT? Um, 
to be honest, uh, if I'm sending it to you, you only need an address. You just need a wallet. Mm -hmm. Is there a particular uh, kind of wallet so that I can see it? With NFTs, uh, MetaMask, uh, you got to have a, um, a, a wallet that allows collectibles. Okay. So like Trust Wallet, MetaMask Wallet. Um, I don't know all of them. There's only two I actually know about on ETH that actually accept collectibles. Mm -hmm. um, but any wallet that Rary or the platform it was minted on uh, allows you to connect will work with that platform. So with some of them, they're platform specific. And I can see right, right now, I can actually open up this one right here. And you can't see it, but my MetaMask did pop up and it is loading. And I just signed it. And then it should pop up any second now on the main screen. So now we can see everything inside of it. So we actually see the cover image, which in this case, the cover image is a dice roll. You screenshot this and you actually just did a dice roll. So your screenshot will have a dice number. <laughs> Because this is a board game inside of an NFT. Um, and you see okay. here. I heard you talking about that. I saw you talking about that on uh, Twitter. Yeah, I, this image right here you're seeing is a base 64 image. So it's completely embedded inside the NFT. It's not stored anywhere else. Nice. It's only stored right there. And then as you see right here, um, this will allow your users actually, if they get the Assembler World app, which is a AR, VR, 3D teaching app where they, te they use it to teach students. And since it's free, I'm using it to make board games and yeah. showrooms. And so they could actually get that app right now and scan this with the app by pausing the video. And then they'll actually be able to see the board game. They might not be able to 100% play, but they could see the board game in 3D, VR, or AR. Nice. And I'm just going to, as you can see here, there's a, in this case, there's a community wallet that is connected to it. So kind of like you would have on Monopoly, you know, there's a community money scene. Well, there's also one here and the rules are in here. Um, as you can see, these little things I'm hovering over, those are all links. So um, we're just gonna click on one of these and see if we can bring it up. Oh no, see right there opening app. Oh no, I don't have the app installed on this one. Hmm. Oopsie doozy. Um, but yeah, as you saw there, it was going to open it up in the app and allow me to view it. Um, I've completely forgot I have to have the app installed. Um, but yeah, as you see there, it's quite simple. And as we go through, like as we're back up on it, we can see all the different owners who own it. So like Kenneth Bozak owns one, um, Euclid and Missing Crypto, they all own one and then a few other people. Um, as you see here, there's an NFT Games Interactive uh, company on Rarible. They own one or they own two. Oh, nice. um, we can see transaction history so you can see how your NFT is doing if it's getting resold and stuff or people using it stuff like that then as you can see here here's all that data all those um, extra data that we were putting in so you can see the top is the ones that was on the, the words that were on the left and the bottom is the words that were on the right when we were minting trying to mint you see here it says NFT version a bundle all the different stuff and it has a couple extra things in there and then bids so you can see people have bid on it um bids on most platforms are really great on rarible it sucks <laughs> uh, but the great thing the great thing is is you can take um just about any nft on ethereum and you can go to OpenSea and you can put it up for bid or auction there which is a hundred times better um rarible makes you do three transactions to accept a bid on OpenSea, it's one transaction to accept a bid. Nice. Huge difference. And so the gas fees and all that's lower. So anything you do on Ethereum, you can actually go to OpenSea. And you can just basically um, resell it there. And then if someone owns it, they can then just turn around and go back to the original platform, connect their wallet, and then unlock the data that's stored inside of it or see it in its original whatnot. And as you see how I just popped up open C real fast. Um, let's see, I'm gonna reload the page so I can connect my MetaMask and then it should let me log in. Um, open C for Ethereum is the best place to sell mm -hmm. because you can go, like if you went to um, Super Rare or Maker's Place to NFTs, which those platforms you have to get accepted with an account and all that. 
then you can actually still go here and sell it without needing an account. Your account is simply just your wallet. See there, sign in. And then you see there, it actually recommended MetaMask. It's yeah. the number one most used on Aetherum, from my understanding. Hmm. And it should pop up any second now. Yeah, it's loading now. So uh, Aetherum, um, because uh, NFTs have been on Aetherum since, like, I want to say 2016, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit sooner, it has the most options, the most um, accessible ways to mint, uh, transfer, and even use NFTs because there are NFTs that can be used in games like um, Decentraland, Sandbox, um, uh, Crypto Voxels. These are like game type things where one of them is kind of like Minecraft. Um, and you can just go in there and you can load up your NFTs. And if your NFT is an object, like I have a gun NFT. And so if I go into that platform and I log in, I actually, if I log in with my MetaMask, I'll be able to use that gun in the game. Really? It'll become an actual asset. And so that's cool. Um, NFTs directly send data to a user. Um, I, I always like to say an NFT is a, an exact location on blockchain. A wallet is not an exact location. It's an mm. approximate location, but an NFT is an exact location. If, your home is an NFT. The number on your home is your ID number for the NFT. Mm. The, the street address is your wallet. So you can move your home. You can ship it back and forth. You can pick it up and move it just like an NFT. The number on the house won't change. Right. But the location it's sitting does. Right. Okay. And through the metadata of the blockchain, we can actually... NFTs build their own blockchain like we saw earlier on uh, OpenSea is not opening up for me. As we saw earlier on Rarible, the transaction history, it actually becomes its own blockchain. It's a, it has its own micro blockchain of data to show, hey, this is everywhere it's been. This is everywhere it's at right now. Oh, I need to reload the page. As you can see there, there is four or five different ones available on Rarible. And as soon as it reloads the page, MetaMask pops up. MetaMask. Yeah, MetaMask, they, they hide it unless you have it. And then they say, okay. Um, <laughs> You're good. Come on strange. in. Yeah, yeah. It's a little bit strange, but it still works. And I'm going to just go back to the, the history. So we see here in this history, has its own micro blockchain of data. So all that can be analyzed and everything, uh, like with OpenSea, I'm going to try OpenSea again without logging in because OpenSea has these really neat features that if you're going to get into NFTs, they're really great to look at because you can view um, rankings and collection data. So this is the reason why you might want to have a collection um, on Wax. I think they're called stores um, on Phantasm. They're called storefronts. And, but this will allow for actual information where we can say, okay, what's the set? Like see here, seven day volume, seven day change, total volume, the average price, how many owners, how many assets, and we can go around, we can go from brand new to art, domain names, all these different things like virtual worlds I was talking about earlier, where you know it's an actual game. Um, so you can go through and, and actually get real data on everything. And so one of the things that I do is every week I go through and I track NFTs and I see which ones are getting hot, which ones are not doing so great. I try to find different ones for investors to buy. And I, I, I do all that stuff for, mostly for fun. Mm -hmm. um, but I highly have to use the OpenSea system because it's the only one I know about besides having a node and asking the node to do all this data for me. That's, they just happen to have a full node, so they're able to pull this data for us. And mm -hmm. yeah, the, it allows you to do so much in, with just a few clicks of a button. And then you see, I'm not even logged in, and I'm still able to use it. So let's talk about NFT itself. So non-fungible tokens, what does that mean? That means that each individual token is unique to its own value. So remember earlier, it was asking me, do you want to mint one or multiple? Say I minted multiple, and I minted 100 of them. Each individual one out of that 100 has their own 
uh, fungibility or their own way of having value. With uh, regular fungible tokens like Bitcoin, all Bitcoins are not considered equal based on its transaction history. So if a Bitcoin was used in a, a, a shady transaction, like um, you know anything that's been, you know, FBI has come after them like Silk Road or anything like that, we call those, you know, tainted Bitcoin. Mm. Although it is cheaper to get a tainted Bitcoin, not everyone will accept it because mm. they can they can say, well, I don't want to accept Bitcoins from these places. Now, an NFT, out of those hundred NFTs we had minted theoretically, if one of those NFTs, say the sixteenth one out of mint number ID seven five two, was used in a shady transaction, because you know, it can be, um, then that one is only the tainted one. And all the other ones of that same ID number are no or not uh, tainted. And so they're worth more compared to the other one. And then if you're, then they could be sold, they can be sold back and forth, but then they just don't have the same qualities as a Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, things like that. Uh, yeah, as in quality or value, that differs to each individual person looking at it. Like, as we can see here on the screen, hash masks, um, they have actually have an average sell value of 2.2 ETH. Mm -hmm. So in this case, owning one hash mask is worth more than owning one Ethereum. Hmm. And that's, um, you know, like when you have Pokemon cards... Uh, this is the best example. I, I hear Ken always using this as an example, and everyone I talk to this, you have to go back to this. Is um, I have Pokemon cards from way back when, because you know I was always into Pokemon. I have the Pokemon games and stuff, and I actually have a Pokemon card that's worth a hundred dollars. Mm. I could go to a card shop and I could sell that. Well, the card shop gonna take a little under a hundred, and I could get my money out of it, right? Then they can get the full hundred when they resell it. All right. So, so these are very similar to that, even though there is a hundred thousand of those cards well, i think it was a thousand of those cards um that one individual one had a misprint which made it more valuable um and another one to talk about is there's been recently nba top shots they have these moments stored as nfts and they have a few that are misprinted where the information in it is not correct mm. and that actually makes them worth more than the ones that are with the correct information because that's you know, they're augmentedly made. They're made uh, using uh, a computer. You know, a computer is automatically making them for them. Mm. So if one has a misprint, it makes it way more valuable than all the others because none of the other ones have that misprint. Oh, nice. So if you're, so you created it and you tell someone that you're having a gallery sale on NFTs, you have a personal website or they would go to these one of these websites to uh, buy it. Now that's that's going to differ per chain. Let's stick with Ethereum in this case. Um, because of OpenSea, you can actually embed NFTs into a website. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to have a sell, you could build a website to do the sell. Or, yeah, you can have them go to the OpenSea listing or you can have them go to the Rarible listing or wherever the listing is on whatever platform is minted. Um, and that just allows really the user to take choice in how they want to sell it. And really is kind of like traditional art, traditional art. If I make a traditional piece of art, which, you know, I am an artist, I have had art go across the globe. Um, I can choose how I want to sell it. I can go to a gallery and sell it at the gallery, or I can call Joe Blow and say, Hey, Joe Blow, do you want to buy this piece of art? for x amount of money if they say yeah then we we do it on the back end same thing actually like nowadays because of ethereum gas i found out that it's cheaper to sell your nft over the counter hmm. where people just contact you and say hey i want to buy that nft and then you have them send you the eth and then you send them the nft it's a little bit more scary that way <laughs> because these, these platforms are basically acting like a middleman for you where they accept the NFT, they accept the ETH, and then after they have both, they do the division where the other person gets what they're supposed to get, you get what you're supposed to get. Right. But it's cheaper to OTC because doing a peer-to-peer -peer transaction on Ethereum is cheaper than any contract interaction.